What's up, rideshare new drivers? I'm a new driver myself. Um, been got over over 200 rides now, so I like it. Um, you learn a lot. <laughs> You're gonna learn a lot as you go. But I'm here to help you out with some uh, tips and answer some questions if you got some tips. But let's jump right into it. Um, one of the more important things I want to start off with is uh, don't speed. There's, you know, you're getting paid once you, you know, you're going to pick up a, a, a passenger. Don't speed to the get there because you're not going to end up waiting anyways. 90% of the time, the passenger ain't even ready. Um, and don't take shortcuts. Uh, shortcuts are very bad. Um, <laughs> just, you find yourself going through shortcuts, you're going to find yourself in harm's way because there's not intersections, there's not stop signs. Um, there's, um, I actually dropped a, uh, a guy off at, at a, his job and I was go, exiting the shopping mall. And I had the right of way, and I was driving through there, and uh, some lady come around this corner of, of these cars and bashed and smashed my back of my driver's side door. My car was down and out for a week, so I uh, had to get it repaired. It was her fault. She paid for it, but still, it just it was private property. You know, the cops don't get involved too much, um, so it's an uphill battle a lot of times, and it's just not worth it. So stay on the main roads, um, stop signs, stop signals. It's just a lot easier if you miss your if you miss your your uh, destination just drive by there's a net one block over you can go around the block come on back it's no big deal so um that's very important uh don't eat a lot of crazy foods and drink a lot of coffee <laughs> for my sake for coffee because um you don't want to have to go to the bathroom and stop and have to use the bathroom especially with the passenger or if, it's, if you're getting pinged a lot for rides back-to-back -back rides you don't want to stop and hit the pause it's almost impossible to you might have to cancel a ride you don't do not want that um my, my problem with i drink a lot of coffee in the morning and the caffeine just makes me have to go to the bathroom all the time bouncing down the road so i cut back on my coffee you don't want to eat a bunch of crazy hot food and and uh greasy food night four and uh have bath emergency breaks folks i'm just telling you because uh it, it won't be fun um keep your car clean very important thing um, exterior and interior. I live in uh, Minnesota, so uh, we got a lot of snow, salt, sand. Um, so I get my car washed every other day usually. But the interior is just as important, if not any more important, because you want it to smell fresh. You want it to be clean, not no hair. Um, you don't want it to smell like cigarette smoke because some passengers smell like cigarette smoke. Some passengers smell like food. Um, what I do is um, I got some. I'm going to show you guys some spray here. This is a disinfectant spray. It's uh, I got it at Target. It kills 99.99% of bacteria and viruses, and it also kills cold and flu viruses. You pick up a lot of different people from a lot of different places that people pick up bacteria and germs and viruses from different stores and different parts of town, and you're getting it uh, uh, into your car. So I spray this every night before I'm done working, and I let it sit for about 10 minutes with all the doors closed. Then I come back and Febreze it. Not too heavy. You don't want to go crazy with the fabric softener because uh, uh, the air freshener because you don't want your car to be too strong because it affects people and they're going to say something. So just keep a good fresh smell in it. And uh, I got a lot of compliments on how good my car smells. And and don't go crazy with the, the body spray either, the Axe and the uh, cologne and stuff, perfume if you're lady, because that can stink up the whole car and people don't want to smell that. So... Just keep your car front smelling fresh. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, another thing is too uh, is, is wipe your car down with uh, Clorox wipes, bacteria, uh, Clorox bleach wipes, all the door handles and the doorknobs and the and the plastics, all that stuff because, like I said before, people touch all that stuff with their hands and stuff. So you want to keep that stuff clean. Okay. Uh, I always be very respectful and nice to the passenger. Um, you're shooting for five star ratings. You're not going to keep that five star ratings. Uh, it's almost near impossible. I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but just be very nice to your passengers. Um, if you're having a bad day, don't take it out on your car. Or most important, don't take it on the passenger. Don't drive aggressive with the passenger. You know, if you're having a bad day and a lot of stuff on your mind, just shut her down for the day. Call it a day. That's one thing nice about Uber or uh, and rideshare companies is you can shut her down anytime of the day you want and come back to fight another day because you don't want to be driving around with things on your mind and and thoughts 
and you'd be missing turns and driving more, a little more aggressive. And, and then people are picking up on that, that sense of, 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 you know, of bad, bad behavior. And, and you know, it's going to affect your ratings. So just come back to fight another day. Um, what I do to keep a five star rating is, um, I did some research on this is I work normal business hours. I get up at, I start, I get up about six and I start about six thirty, seven 7 o'clock in the morning. And I pick up a lot of people going to work, uh, and uh, women and dropping off kids to school and going off to work and whatnot and businessmen going downtown and just normal business hours. And I, I take breaks throughout the day, but um, you know, it helps keep your five-star ratings near up high. Cause uh, the night crowd, I heard, they, I heard a lot of scary stories about it and and they mess with your ratings and uh, they try to pay you cash and they, and they, I don't know if you're into the nightlife, do it, go ahead and fight it. But I heard a lot of you get a lot of bad ratings and you got to call Uber and try to fight for that. And it, I don't know, I haven't done it yet. So I don't think I'm going to, cause I, I'm, I stay very busy in St. Paul, Minneapolis area was just driving for Uber. So I don't even need to try that nightlife, but I heard it just, it drops your ratings down a lot. So, um, don't, uh, don't race to the surges or drive fast, cut corners, because you pop up and see a surge, it'll say four hours and fifty cents, and bang, you'll you'll like I gotta get there. Odds are that surge is gonna last 10, 15 minutes tops. And and what happens is, the time you get there, it might shut down or it might just de- decrease a lot, and you might not even make it. You might make it a dollar fifty of it or two dollars of that five dollar surge. But you'll as you learn to drive, you'll know the hot spots or the 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 hot zones when surges happen throughout the day like rush hour in the morning time rush hour at night um sometimes during the day even and then of course the bar scene out here they got surges too but um yeah just don't get crazy and, and push the envelope to get these surges you'll you'll get your surges throughout your time driving they'll pop up and as long as you stay in a, a metropolitan area a busy area you will get the surges so just relax you know you'll get your surges um Let's see, uh, long distance trips, you will get a long distance trip. Um, what I found is do is once you go get that long distance trip, it pays pretty good. But what I do is after I drop my rider off, I shut my app down. I do not sit in a, a rural area and wait for a ride because rural areas just don't call a lot of Ubers or rideshare people. So you'll sit there for 25, 30 minutes, 40 minutes sometimes, I guess, and, and maybe get a, a one ride that will only go five, 10 minutes away whatever it, it won't pay it what i do is i just turn my app off and head back to the busy part of town the metropolitan area downtowns and uh turn my app back on and you'll make them you'll make that up and rides fast as you more faster than just sitting in a, a rural area doing nothing so that's that's one of my suggestions you can do what you want but you know i, I hear people drive around and, and and uh in these dead spots and wait wait and you'll wait 25 30 minutes for a ride they, they don't even go that far <laughs> It's not worth it, folks. Not for me, it ain't, anyways. Um, I always tell the rider before they leave is make sure they got all their belongings. Make sure to check the trunk <laughs> because some people go to the airport. You do a lot of airport runs, and they might forget, and you might forget because you know they're busy on their phone or just distracted doing other things. So make sure they get all their belongings, and um, I always tell them to have a nice day and thank you, and, and just be polite, and they'll thank you back, and it's gonna. Just as they leave their your car and exit, they're gonna leave on a good note, and that's a positive note, and it helps along. It goes a long way. Um, <laughs> if you if you can't find your location t- to your destination, because Uber, I don't know how Lyft is, but Uber is very generic on on getting to the pinpoint of accuracy of the precise area of pickup. Sometimes the houses are a little easier because you can see the addresses. But in downtown areas, in apartment buildings, in, in, in warehouses, it's very hard because you don't see their addresses. And you'll drive around, and, and all of a sudden, it'll be really close, and then all of a sudden, it's not, you don't see no rider there. So what you got to do is you got to end up going around these blocks, and then all of a sudden, you got to restart again. And once you're really close, it it, it 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 starts charging the rider. It says, you know what I'm saying, the rider gets, it says, uh, rider notified. And then uh, they're getting charged, so... Right away, if you can't find them, especially downtown, once you're close and you don't see them and you can't find the address, pull over out of a 
uh, busy area fast as you can and call that rider and tell him tell him say hey I'm close I'm uh, I'm on Fourth and Robert Street for example for me because I'm downtown St Paul I'm on Fourth and Robert Street uh, crossroads or I'm on I'm on Four Eleven Robert Street you look at the nearest uh, address you can or a landmark that helps you out a lot because what that does is then that tells them that they can go outside and look and then they know you're close because you can't sit in a bus area or in, in block traffic because there's nowhere to park really downtown. So you got to keep moving. And once you, once they get notified, they're, they're going to be charging you and that might affect your rate, your, your, your five-star rating, because you know, it just, you gotta, you gotta stay focused. You gotta pay attention. And, and you know what I'm saying? They might call you even and say, Hey, I'm on the, or text you and say, Hey, I'm on the North side or whatever. I'm outside of, I'm staring at the bus station, whatever. As long as you stay in contact with them, they're going to be a lot happier than driving around circles. Cause especially downtown with one ways and do not enters. You can't, <laughs> you'll be, you don't want to be uh, going around three, four blocks to come back to that one spot because that just takes up too much time. And you gotta be careful. Speaking of one ways, <laughs> I actually went down a couple of one ways or do not enters on accident because trying to find a location and luckily for me there's no passenger car but i turned around and notified myself but sometimes it happens faster than you think you'll be like oh wow one way do not enter oh shoot and you'll have to stop turn around back up and because <laughs> so pay attention you know it, you'll learn as you go you'll learn the the lay of the land a little bit better but <laughs> when you first start off you think you might know that lay of the land but <laughs> you'll go down some uh, one ways um you're uh you're an independent driver you're a professional driver so drive with your lights on sunny are not sunny rain shine snow drive with your lights on it's just a good train of thought to keep and that will make you always want to use your blinkers always use your left and right blinkers because you will come up with sudden stops left to right especially if the passenger is telling you which way to go they want their route to go you want to make sure you use your blinkers so people know and i bought spot mirrors for my side of my little mirrors just to help me get through the the uh, blind spots but yeah use your blinkers always folks always because you don't know when you're gonna have to turn they come up faster than you think sometimes and just it's just a lot easier it keeps you out of harm's way um and that just brings me to the next one drive with awareness 100 percent. don't drive like you're going to wally world or to disneyland with your family trucks or with the kids and the family and the wife in the car because you're not you're driving people to their destination a to b and uh you, you know, they're looking for safety and, and satisfaction. And so drive with your hands with 10 to ten to 2, you know, l keep your seat up high. Uh, don't lean. Don't have the radio on. Once I get a uh, um, a ping and I got a, a destination to go pick up, a rider, I turn my radio off. I, I don't even listen to the radio. I'm 100% focused on my job in hand because I don't want to miss turns. I don't want to cut people off. You know what I'm saying? And that will just lead into when the passenger's in the car to dr you'll have full focus and when they feel confident in you and they feel safety they're going to rate you high and then you keep that rating high uh, avoid bus stops and delivery spots you know you might be able to stop for a couple seconds if your rider's out there waving you down or you see them or they see you they can hop in and have your use your hazards mainly downtown area or anywhere that's in a busy area use your hazards and that's why you got the dress codes for me is uber because it's important that they see you because huh, I picked up a lady at the Union Depot, the Amtrak's uh, train station, and she uh, told me to go up on, or the GPS told me to go up on top of the ramp, which as soon as I got up there, it says do not, uh, no, only buses and deliveries only. Well, I went up there anyways because that's where the, desk, the GPS told me to go, and there was a cop up there. And I called the lady, I said, I'm up here waiting for you, and she's like, oh, I'm down on the main uh, road. And I said, well, the GPS didn't tell me that. She goes, I'm sorry. And I said, oh, whatever. So then I... I exited out there and a cop stopped me. He's like, what are you doing up here? I said, I, I said I'm waiting for my ride. He, I said, she ain't up here. He goes, you're not supposed to be up there. I said, I know, I'm just going by the GPS. She, he goes, it's not her fault, it's your fault. You obey all the street signs. Don't let me catch you up here again, he says. He was a, he was mad about it. And, you know, they don't they don't like uh, Uber drivers and rideshare drivers, for that matter, thinking they can get away with uh, bus, bus stops and delivery stops because you clog up their lanes and whatnot, you know. That's why airports have... There are little spots to sit at the airport waiting because they don't want people clogging in with the general public. <laughs> but, uh, and then um, another thing I was talking about is some safety. Um, safety, safety. Uh, I bought one of these. Cheap on eBay, 35 bucks or something. Run your mill, China. 
it's a backup light, a backup camera and a dash camera. I don't pick up, I didn't pick up the, the, I didn't hook up the backup camera. I don't really care about that right now, but the, 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 uh, dash cam is what I care about. You know, just for a, you drive a lot, you read in your car a lot. It just, it records lap time, everything in front of you. And it's, that, you know, it's a good peace of mind. So if something happens, it's on camera. I got it on uh, like a one or two or three minute, uh, laps. So, and as soon as you turn your car and it turns on by itself, it turns off by itself. You know, I just ran it under, underneath my dash. Yeah, tucked away, looked really nice. But yeah, it's something to get for 32 bucks. It just, it's a rubber band that goes right around your, uh, straps right around your factory. Uh, so a lot of people don't even know you got it and it looks nice. Um, another thing about safety is, um, stun gun, taser guns. Um, Uber, I checked into Uber's policy and I read, uh, I watched a video online. Uber doesn't have a gun policy. They just, they're highly against it, but they don't say, no, you can't have a gun. I, I think a gun's a little extreme, extreme for uh, Uber because the, of the app to app safety, you know who you're picking up and they know who's driving you. But, uh, you guys should at least have a stun gun, check your local laws, but Minnesota, we can have one. And it's just a sense of, of security, man. And cause you know, there's horror stories out there and this day and age in this world, stuff does happen. And, you know, so I drove out some far distances in the middle of nowhere with just me and the passenger. And, you know, I had no security, no nothing to happen. If, you know, if you want to rob me or, or do anything you want to do, you know, I, I had no defense. So, you know, just don't think it's not, don't think nothing's not going to happen to you because it can happen to anybody. You, you know, you watch the news, you know what's going on out there. So these are about 25 bucks or 30 bucks on eBay. So, and then, uh. These little handy dandy signs, you know, I got some, uh, good ratings. I keep trying to get good ratings, um, but you're not going to always get five stars. So this will help them. It just lays in the back of your, other, by the seat, the back passenger, and it tells you if they want heat, music. I got phone chargers. You got to, you should have these in your car. People ask for the charger, tablets, iPhones, Androids, and, uh, and it tells you where your seat buckle and it tells you for tips. They're not required, but we greatly appreciate them, folks. And the five-star rating is probably the most important thing. Uh, Uber's threshold is 4.62 or something, and it's out of our hands. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not going to get into a deep conversation about it. Watch some videos on it. I'm going to make a video about it down the road, but Uber's policy on these ratings is terrible. And uh, so if you drive with confidence and be very nice and obey the street signs and don't speed, and get your passenger to their destination in a safe manner. Odds are you're gonna stay above the threshold. So don't don't get discouraged with the the couple uh, four stars and even a one star I got that I have no idea why because I take my job very serious and I'm a really good driver. But if somebody's having a bad day, they got up to 30 days to rate you. Remember, you gotta rate them within the time they get out of the car. You gotta rate your passenger. They got up to 30 days to rate you. So. The, their last remark is is very important. So get one of these. They're five, ten bucks on eBay or Amazon or something. You get two of them. So I only carry one in my car. But other than that, folks, I don't know. Just be safe. Get out there, make some money. Drive with Uber, Lyft if you do that. Rideshare, it's a good business, you know. So until next time, thanks for watching my video. Peace.